In today's video, we're going to discuss the possibility of Taylor Hall being traded again before the deadline. Will Jumbo Joe Thornton join another team for a Stanley Cup run? Plus, we're also looking at teams like the Hurricanes, the Bruins, the Wild, and the Rangers. We'll get into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now before we jump into the trade rumors I want to look at today, I just want to take a quick moment here and acknowledge what happened last night during the St. Louis Blues-Anaheim Ducks game. A St. Louis Blues defenseman, Jay Bomeister, had a medical emergency where he collapsed on the Blues bench uh, early into the first period. The game ended up being postponed and will be replayed at a later date. Uh, of course, thankfully, Blues and Ducks uh, medical personnel were able to act very quickly uh, and uh, get him uh, to the point where he could be transported to hospital awake and alert. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly everything that they had to do uh, to help Bo Meester, but it was certainly a very scary situation. Uh, General Manager of the Blues, Doug Armstrong, did put out a statement uh, indicating that he is, like I said, awake and alert at hospital uh, for further testing and observation, and we'll see uh, what this means for Bo Meester's future, but a very scary situation. My thoughts are with Jay Bo Meester. I certainly hope he's able to recover and resume playing the game of hockey that I know he loves and he's played for a very long time. Now let's jump into the latest trade rumors involving the Arizona Coyotes and the possibility could they actually end up flipping Taylor Hall before the NHL trade deadline. This very topic was examined and discussed on the latest edition of TSN's NHL Insider Trading. Uh, and Pierre Lebrun uh, basically took a look at this and said that there's really not much of a chance that the Coyotes are going to end up flipping Taylor Hall. When they made this acquisition, they had full intent on uh, not only using him as a rental, but re-signing him and keeping him in the fold for an extended period of time. There's already been talks between ownership, the GM, John Chaka, Hall, and his representative, Darren Ferris, about potential extensions that they haven't really gotten too far. Uh, basically, they've all kind of agreed to let the season play out and examine things early on. Of course, the Coyotes would be the only team who could offer him an eight-year contract extension. It's not really clear exactly what Taylor Hall is going to want, but I can imagine when he was acquired, they were in first place in their division. Things are really tight in that part of the NHL and the standings. Like I said, all it takes is a few wins or a few losses, and you can go from first place down to third, fourth, fifth, and vice versa. Uh, so clearly the Coyotes' fortunes have slipped a bit lately, and they're not, they don't have that firm hold uh, on first place that they'd like to have. So uh, clearly I think whether or not they make the playoffs and what his confidence is in the group moving forward will certainly play a major role in whether or not he re-signs with Arizona. But it seems like they are all in and trying to keep him and re-sign him. So I think the likelihood of him being traded again before the deadline, there was extremely slim chances here. Uh, the Coyotes haven't really had a player of his caliber in some time, and they fully intend to try to build around him and keep the success going here that they've had early in this season. Uh, clearly, they could use some more offense and some better luck with the injury front. Uh, goaltender Darcy Kumper and Antti Ranta both had their fair share of injury battles, and they can't seem to stay healthy for extended times. Uh, so we'll see how the Coyotes do, but regardless of what happens, uh, Pierre Lebrun's reporting that it seems very very unlikely that a haul would be moved again ahead of the deadline. Now, could we see Jumbo Joe Thornton go off to another organization, leave San Jose, and chase a Stanley Cup elsewhere? Because it's pretty clear at this point the Sharks are not going to be playoff contenders uh, for the current NHL season. And Joe Thornton's on an expiring contract. He's been doing those one-year deals for a little while now. Uh, so clearly, it's not quite clear what his future holds. He has a full no-trade clause. So he does have a lot of uh, you know ability to decide his own fate, his own future, depending on what teams want to acquire him. But there are reports indicating that the two teams are kind of kicking tires having internal discussions. That's the Boston Bruins, where he started, as well as the Tampa Bay Lightning, both rivals in the Atlantic Division. Of course, earlier in the year, it looked like the Bruins had it all but locked up, but the Lightning have been a really hot team here uh, in the last little while and have really closed that gap down significantly. And now there's not much of a gap at all, and the Lightning certainly do have a possibility of winning the division and finishing in first place here after all. But adding another veteran like Joe Thornton for either of these clubs, I think, would be a really good addition. Clearly, the Lightning are tight on cap space, so it would be something that they're not going to be able to do a lot of moves ahead of the deadline. Uh, they also probably would like to add a depth defenseman, is what a lot of the other reports are indicating. Uh, and with the Bruins, of course, they have some other moves they want to make uh, clearly as well. So it's going to depend 
On the price tag, I don't think either team would want to give up a whole lot. I don't think the Sharks would really be looking for much of a return either. Uh, they could eat up a little bit of that remaining salary as well to make the deal work, really just to facilitate an opportunity for Thornton to go chase a cup. It'd be fun to watch him go back to Boston where it all started and see uh, if he can grab the Stanley Cup with the Bruins. But either way, I'd just like to see Joe have an opportunity. And uh, apparently some of these teams are, are considering the possibility of bringing in the veteran into the fold. Now, there's a lot of questions around the New York Rangers ahead of the deadline. The latest talk here on Insider Trading from Bob McKenzie on Chris Kreider. That there's a growing sense of optimism that Kreider could actually end up re-signing and remaining in New York. That's far from a done deal. Lots of work to be done, and he very well could still end up being traded. But there's certainly more optimism now than there has been really at any point here in the last number of weeks or months leading into this as we get closer to the NHL deadline here. Uh, but certainly there's other players on the Rangers besides Kreider who are trade targets, including defenseman Tony D'Angelo and even to a degree center iceman Ryan Strom. Now both of those guys are pending restricted free agents. They very well both could be part of the future of the Rangers, but there's really not a given here that the Rangers are going to want to pay them the raises that they're going to earn on their next contracts. Uh, clearly they're both having solid years, uh, putting up a lot of offensive numbers uh, both kind of have some defensive deficiencies I think it's fair to say but Strom's been playing a lot of top line minutes getting 19 20 minutes a night playing center ice often with the top wingers so with the production of both Strom and D'Angelo are putting up they're going to be wanting substantial raises and just debatable whether or not the Rangers are going to want to pay that or not uh, clearly they have a lot of tough decisions to make I don't think it's a foregone conclusion either of these players are traded but I think if other teams come along with a nice offer that's going to present them with some good assets for the future, then it is a certainly a strong possibility that they could be considered to be trade bait here. The other item to watch with the Rangers, of course, is the three-headed monster in goal. With the end goaltender, Igor Shosturkin getting a lot of the starts lately. Obviously, the three of these guys are you know, trying to be patient, but it's difficult when you're not getting a lot of playing time. So it is firmly believed that Alexander Georgiev will be the goaltender that is eventually moved, and they'll go with the tandem of Shosturkin and Lundqvist a longer term here. Uh, but clearly, the Rangers are going to be looking for the right offer. And but at this time, the Rangers don't feel pressured to make a decision now that goaltending situation very well could be sorted out sometime in the offseason. As reports indicated before, when the Leafs were inquiring about Georgiev, the price tag that the Rangers are looking for is quite substantial, and many teams may not be in a position to be able to pay that right now. Now, there is some growing talk around the NHL that the Boston Bruins might be able to find a new home for forward David Backus, who cleared waivers approximately four weeks ago and has been sitting at home waiting to play. They essentially didn't want him to go down to the minors. They decided it was best he wait. Uh, and not play for the sake of possibly being injured could impact his trade value. And it is believed now that there's some growing interest that teams might be able to willing to take that contract on for the remainder of this year and next, which certainly give the Bruins a lot of flexibility uh, when it comes to adding at the deadline. One team I would probably look to who's made it clear that they have some space and are willing to use it if teams are willing to add in some nice sweeteners and some other assets would be the Anaheim Ducks. I've said that before. I think it's a possibility, especially knowing the fact that the Bruins are appear to have interest in forward Andre Kasha. Would not be surprising to see them maybe strike a deal on that front. But David Backus is getting some interest. Unfortunately, he does have a bit of a no trade clause, which could block some teams out. Uh, and there have, apparently have been some interest from some teams but the no trade clause prevented any deals from happening. So I guess we'll see what happens. I would think at this point, Backus would just want an opportunity to play. And if that's not going to come in Boston, then he would accept a trade to whoever would go, you would think. But not necessarily, I guess. We'll see what happens with the Boston Bruins and David Backus. But apparently there is some sense of optimism that he could be moved ahead of the deadline. Now also here, the Carolina Hurricanes are looking to make what we call a hockey trade for a defenseman. They have kicked tires on defensemen like Brendan Dillon and Sammy Votnin. Uh, but as we've known from the past, uh, owner Tom Dunnan really is not in favor of acquiring rental players. He really tries to make best use of all assets and funds for the team. And he feels like giving up assets for a short-term rental situation is not really best and really doesn't make a lot of sense for the organization in their future. So as discussed on Insider Trading, the, the Hurricanes are looking for more of a defenseman with some term on their contract, not somebody who's a pending UFA. Uh, so it certainly does rule out some of the other guys that we've talked about here in the past, but there's plenty of defensemen out there who could fit the bill uh, and certainly could adjust their situation moving forward because they do have Dougie Hamilton uh, who's injured, which is causing all this in the first place. Uh, and Hamilton obviously will be back at some point. Obviously this would impact their overall uh, cap situation moving forward, which could force another move in the off season. But I guess the Dundon's philosophy here would be to acquire a player with term would be more easily traded. At least you could get something back later so clearly the hurricanes are in the market for a defenseman and they don't really want a rental player according to the insider trading reports here 
Now, the Minnesota Wild, of course, traded Jason Zucker to the Pittsburgh Penguins and it appears they're not done. GM Bill Guerin apparently is willing to listen to offers of Matt Dumba and Jonas Brodeen. Now, he also mentioned uh, in a quote uh, after the Zucker trade that uh, if he appears as though the team is quitting and not putting out the effort that more trades will be made. But in my opinion, Guerin needs to do what's best for this team. They did come up with a big 4 nothing victory after uh, the Zucker trade, their first game on the ice last night. So that, clearly that was a good sign. Good effort all around. Uh, but clearly there's more work to be done but Bill Guerin really seeks a top center iceman for one of these defensemen which is going to be very difficult to come by uh, Matt Dumba does have I think more value than Brodeen longer term but clearly to get a number one center is going to be a pretty major challenge for Guerin to acquire but so apparently he's also willing to consider somebody who's more of a number two center but there'd have to be something else added with it either a very higher end prospect or maybe a high draft pick or another roster player who could fill another spot on the team so clearly Guerin willing to continue listening keep taking this team more towards a bit of a rebuild or a reset whatever you want to call it but one of those defensemen could fetch them a top center iceman that certainly would be a possible deal we might see now we've seen Dumba linked to the Maple Leafs in the past and obviously if that is really what Garen's asking price is I would think that the Leafs would not be able to handle that. Uh, their strength right now is in wingers, not centermen. They're not going to be looking to move Matthews or Tavares or anything like that. So clearly, they would have to move like a Kapanen, a Janssen, or Kerfoot. Now, I guess Kerfoot does play center, but he's not really considered a number one. Really, not even sure he's a number two center. He's filling in nicely in the top six at times with the Leafs, but not really sure he fits that bill that they're looking for. So I would think Dumba to the Leafs is probably pretty unrealistic uh, unless Garen decides to change what his asking price and what he's willing to accept in return but he's not done at all and one of these defensemen very well could help them land the forward that they so desperately need let us all your latest news updates for today so of course as always we'll know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section let me know what you think on all the latest rumors and what we might see ahead of the deadline and we can discuss further if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well i'd appreciate it if you did as always thank you for watching and i will catch you next time mm -hmm.